A leader's strategy should be as fluid as water, flexible rather than fixed and unchanging. His army should move freely and skillfully and adapt to the enemy's situation. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Like I said last time, precepts 13 and 14 are closely linked to one another. Where 13 tells us to adapt to any situation and to adapt to our opponent, precept 14 tells us the outcome of a battle depends on how one handles emptiness and fullness. This ability is something many martial artists like to talk about. Maybe most famously Bruce Lee talked about being like water. It might, it, it might sound too philosophical, but it's an acting, acting or acting, unacting. I mean, here it is, the natural instinct and here is control. You are to combine the two in harmony. The ideal is unnatural naturalness or natural unnaturalness. You see, the idea is Running water never grows there, so you gotta just keep on flowing. Your mind be formed shapeless like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Bruce Lee wasn't the only one who talked about being like water. Just listen to this quote by Sun Tzu in The Art of War. The form of an army should imitate water. Water avoids the high and seeks the low. Soldiers should avoid the enemy's fullness and attack its hollows. Water regulates its flow depending on the shape of the terrain and an army achieves victory by responding to the enemy. Thus, it can be said that there is no standard military operation just as there is no normal shape to water. He who gains victory by skillfully adapting to the enemy's strengths and weaknesses is called exalted. Principles 13 and 14 deal with one's mental attitude in battle. Sun Tzu discusses the management of one's forces in relation to water. Just as water naturally flows from a higher place to a lower one, a commander hopes to avoid the enemy's strengths and to strike at his weaknesses. And just as water changes the shape of its flow according to the contours of the land, becoming slow and quiet on level land, rushing quickly down steep slopes and cascading over the edges of cliffs, an army should adapt itself to the enemy's movements and the terrain in order to secure victory. Therefore, in commanding and directing soldiers, a leader should avoid a standard military action, that is, a leader's strategy should be as fluid as water, flexible rather than fixed and unchanging. His army should move freely and skillfully and adapt to the enemy's situation. The person who can gain victory in this manner is truly superb in military strategy and timing. This concept is not limited to the command of large numbers of soldiers, but can be applied in a narrower sense to the technical aspects of combat in Karate Do. The 19th principle also reinforces the importance of flexibility in one's fighting methods. Do not forget the employments or withdrawal of power, the extension or contraction of the body, the swift or leisurely application of technique, the application of these must vary in relation to the opponent's employments of techniques. There are many well-known proverbs that stress the necessity of adjusting to one's actions or to one's opponents, such as adapt one's speech to the audience, or uh, when in a village follow its customs, when in Rome, right? The 13th and 14th principles have deep significance not only in combat and karate do, but also in the confrontations and challenges of daily life. The outcome of a battle depends on how one handles emptiness and fullness. If you like what you see here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day, and as always, thanks for watching. Chuck Norris lost a fight with Bruce Lee in The Way of the Dragon. This was a product of history's most expensive visual effect. When adjusted for inflation, the effect cost more than the gross national product of Paraguay.